Okay, so let's start. So welcome everyone uh, in, in this new world. Uh, usually this would be the welcoming lecture uh, in, uh, in a big uh, room, but now we are doing this through Zoom, so I hope it goes smoothly. Um, so basically, Combench to SH4 is the programming course, right? Uh, the thing is, before even delving into the details of the programming course, this might be one of the very first courses you have in computer engineering. So what I wanted to give you first, and, and this is usually what I do, is what is the bigger picture here, right? So what is computer engineering as a field, where the programming fits, what other courses might you, you might have later uh, will fit in the same uh, bigger picture, good? So let's go through this one by one. So if you look into the full computing, we call this the full system stack, right? So think of the computer or the mobile phone you are using right now. So basically you have an application that is running, Zoom for example, or any other one. And then behind this, you have an operating system that is controlling this application among other applications. And then blue this uh, operating system, you will find what we call an instruction set architecture. Starting from here, you can think of the instruction set architecture as the contract between the software world and the hardware world, right? You all hear about this software or software engineering versus hardware, electronics, computer eng, uh, and, and other things. So ISA or instruction set architecture is basically the contract be between the software and the hardware, good? Uh, and then Beneath the ISA, you would find your hardware in your laptop or your mobile phone. Uh, you have a processor, memory, I.O. system, like screen or keyboard. And then beneath this, you have also some kind of detailed logic layers that we will see later. Good. So let's start with an example, right? Assume that we're going to write a C code or a C++ code or a Visual Basic code. In fact, the language here doesn't really matter, right? So you write an application, again, think of Zoom, given that this is the one that we are using, it's written using a certain language, right? And then this language, having the source code will not give you anything, right? Because this is just source code, lines of code. It doesn't execute anything. So you have to come up with an executable to be able to run and do the task you want to, to achieve. To do this, you have to have a compiler in between, right? And here kicks in, a compiler course or a compiler optimization course. So here in C++ Visual Basic Source Code, we're talking about programming development or programming languages, right? And then you take your source code, you compile it using a compiler. And in fact, I will discuss this later when we talk about labs, but then the compiler take your source code written in a high language like C, the one that we are going to start with and gives you an executable. This executable you are able to run, right? Usually as a user, not as a programmer, what you deal with as an application is this executable thing. So for example, Chrome, Zoom, whatever application you use, PowerPoint, the one that I'm using here, is just running the executable. You don't have access to the source code. Good. So this executable is the one that you give to the end user. Then the executable is running on top of an operating system. For example, here I'm using Zoom on top of Windows. You are using Mac, Android, uh, iOS, whatever Linux, whatever the operating system, uh, it, it achieves certain tasks, right? So one of them is just running application executables. And then this executable is in fact, executing what we call an instruction set. And here comes some assembly programming that you will see in one of your digital design courses. I guess also it, it, uh, it, it, it kind of runs this semester as well. And then with having your assembly code, machine code, you execute this in the platform you have. For example, in your mobile phone, you have what we call a system on a chip. On your laptop, you have different cores, caches, and memories that execute. This is basically the hardware engine that executes uh, the software. Good. So what I'm going to do, in, in fact, I want to start with the bigger picture other than uh, the logistics, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to stop kind of, I have some milestones during the PowerPoint. I'm going to stop and ask if anyone has any question and then you can start raising hands and then I take questions one by one. So I, I don't want to wait until the end uh, to take any question. Good, so after having this hardware, 
you can map all of this journey of a program into the full stack we discussed, right? The source code is the application as well as the executable you have. Then you have the compiler assembler linker that takes the application and transform it into the instruction set. And then the operating system here is running the application on top of the hardware, which is this full layer here. Good. So there are some details into this. So this is a kind of a similar picture, but there are some other more uh, details. For example, the compiler would require some knowledge about the operating system, right? As well as the hardware itself, because a compiler running on a Windows machine using Intel processor would generate to you a different executable than a compiler running in Linux using an AMD machine or an ARM machine, right? So the compiler would require some knowledge about the operating system and the instruction set or the hardware. So it's not just a, a, a kind of a waterfall or a sequential process. It's a kind of a feedback process, good? And then here we started from the source code, which you are going to develop throughout this course uh, and in labs as well. But before this, and, and this is one of the most important things that I want to focus on throughout the lectures is how to think of the problem itself. So writing the source code is in fact not a destination, not, not a target on its own. What, what is the target is to solve a certain problem, right? So you start as a software developer or a programmer, you start from a real life problem that you want to solve. You know you can automate this problem uh, solver, for example. So you devise an algorithm and then you implement or prototype this algorithm in a certain programming language, right? So a successful programmer would start from a well uh, definition of the problem and an efficient algorithm rather than just go ahead and start writing code, right? And then advice I keep, I guess I'm going to say this every lecture, every time you have a problem, whether in lab or in exam, before even starting uh, writing a single line of code, you need to uh, make sure you thought of the problem and your solution. You can even start with a flow chart or having a pseudo code, something in your mind that clarifies what really your solution is going to look like. Otherwise, just sitting in trying to typing in the keyboard in the lab or writing code in, in the exam paper, it's not going to work because you don't have a clear idea of what you want to have as an output, right? So that said, I might stop here and take some questions if, if you have any. So please raise your hand. And if you have questions, I'm going to look into uh, the participants box here and see if anyone has any question. I don't see any hands raised. Or yeah, maybe someone is coming into the chat box. Uh, yeah, this is part of the logistic things that I'm going to cover later, but the short answer is yes. I, I'm going to record all the lectures and then post them on uh, YouTube. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm going to provide you with a link in uh, Avenue announcement. What languages are we using? I'm going to come into this later in the course logistics. Now I'm just focusing on the bigger picture. So if you have any questions in this bigger picture, feel free to ask. I believe it's important always to have this bigger picture in front of you. Otherwise, sometimes I feel that students and, and myself as a student, I used to lose track of why I'm taking this course or how this course is connecting to this course. Would the lectures be mostly theory based? No, and I'm going to discuss this in, in the course logistics as well. Okay, so yeah, so maybe you feel more comfortable with uh, dumping questions in the chat. So feel free to do this. And uh, over time, I'm like every five minutes or 10 minutes, I'm going to look into this and address any question you have. Good. So let's then, given that we have this bigger picture, let's see what um, each course or each field fit in within this bigger picture, right? Okay, so for example, thinking of algorithms, you can think of all this hype of artificial intelligence, machine learning, algorithms, data structures, those questions that you will find in your internship interviews, for example, software engineering all fits in with, within this box, which is devising efficient algorithms for solving specific problems. Good. Then afterwards here, 
in the source code, writing source code, which is this course is one of these category of courses. This is focusing on programming or software development where you already have a problem, you have an idea about the algorithm, and then you start writing code. And then compilers are rather um, addressed in or covered in compiler construction courses and compiler optimization courses. Uh, I believe that in ECE we don't offer any compiler course, but I guess it, you can have this as um, a kind of an optional course from a CES. And then operating systems, this is an operating systems course, I guess usually covered in fourth year. And then looking here into the hardware side, you start from the computer architecture and organization. You have a computer organization course in second year and computer architecture in fourth year. And then going a little bit lower in the level, we have what we call data path control design for computer organization. A lower level, we have the digital logic design and I guess uh, Dr. Bowman is offering this course this semester as well. It's a second year course, digital design course or digital logic design. So it, you get introduced to logic gates, how they are implemented. And basically those gates are the ones that are constructing the bigger processor, right? And then even blue this, gates are composed of what we call transistors. And then moving beyond logic gates or logic design, we have electronic courses, right? So in electronic courses, you see how, for example, you can construct a single gate using multiple uh, transistors, how transistors operate. And basically a transistor is the single unit. It's like the atomic unit of any electronic circuit. And you're going to have some labs that in fact, you, you put some transistors together to build something bigger. Okay, so this was the bigger picture uh, of everything, including maybe all the courses that you might have in your uh, comp uh track. So those concepts are kind of abstract concepts. So maybe you can connect in your mind these all these courses and concepts, for example, for laptops or computer machines. But in fact, even modern devices, I would say modern devices like wearables, IoT devices, like smart homes, mobile phones, they even consist of the same thing. It's just the same concept, but in a different shape. For example, here I'm having a mobile phone and a laptop, and let's compare them together, right? For example, in a laptop, you have a screen, right? A monitor, and the same thing you have in your, uh, in your mobile phone. Even the same thing you have in your maybe smartwatch or wearable, right? Uh, this monitor is nothing other than an input output device. It's in fact an output device only if it's not touch a screen, for example, input output if it's touch a screen. And then also you have a keyboard, maybe a mouse. Here you have your touch a screen uh, instead. And then you have the motherboard in your laptop or desktop that has some processors and memory there. The same thing in your mobile phone, you have what we call system on a chip that consists of a CPU, memory, maybe some camera modules, audio modules and other things. So looking into the hardware or, or, or the architecture, it's, it's almost exactly the same thing, but in a different format, right? So knowing this bigger picture will help you no matter what platform you are looking for. Okay. So that said, uh, I also I kind of stop and look into questions, but I don't find any questions in the chat. There are questions related to logistics again, whether you're going to have the lecture recordings or so. So I'm going to cover this now. But if you have any questions with regard to this bigger picture, uh, please let me know or just post them on the chat here. Okay, seems no questions. Uh, so I can continue, but then maybe I'll check this later. If also you think I'm, I'm talking too quick or too fast, please let me know. I know that this is something that I, uh, I might have a problem with. Um, good, so course logistics. So what do we do into SH4, right? So we looked into the bigger picture of, of everything. So now let's focus on what we do in the, this programming course. So I'm going to be your instructor uh, this, this is how you can connect with me, my email address, my web page, some of my research interests. And uh, can, we, can you build your own laptop or mobile device? 
uh, okay, let me try to address this because this is related to the previous part. Yes, you can if you want. For example, a while ago, I used to build my own desktop. Your laptop, it might be a little bit harder so you can replace something, but you need, so basically the discrete components, like the, the components, for example, the board itself, and like the embedded memory and these things you have here in the laptop, they are not sold discreetly or separately, right? They, they do for desktops, and this is why it's easy to build your own desktop. But what prevents us from building our mobile phones or our laptops is not that it's impossible. It's in fact not that hard. It's that the discrete components, they are not available as discrete components. So from a technology or a concept point of view, yes, you can if you want. How interesting is that or whether you want to do this, this is a different story. Uh, but there is no fundamental reason why you shouldn't be able to, except that the market is not offering these components to put together. Good. Okay, so those are the TA email addresses. I'm also going to have these in uh, as an announcement in Avenue to Learn. And then our lectures are Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, 12.30 to 1.20 through Zoom. Tutorial is Friday, 10.30 to 11.20. I'm going to be the one who is giving the tutorial this year to make sure uh, you, you, you know enough about doing the lab. The main purpose of the tutorial is to introduce to, to the lab if you have any problems, help you a little bit with how to proceed about the lab. Right? So it's not going to introduce any new concepts there. Uh, for lectures, uh, it's not just based like a theory based what I uh, what I used to do last year when we had this normal life is you guys you bring your laptops into the lecture and we have some kind of breaks uh, together I give you questions to solve I program myself with my laptop in the lecture we can try to do the same thing uh, through zoom as well so while we're going forward in the course I'm going to open a compiler start coding something run it change it and we we we, uh, we discuss together. And I advise you all to do the same thing. Once you have your environment set up, which I'm going to go through how to do this now, uh, I advise you to have the environment open such that if we have an example, you just go ahead and write it down in, in, in the lecture and then we all discuss, right? Um, tutorial again is introducing to the lab and then the main purpose of the lab is to apply what you have learned in the lecture. So Zoom links for both lecture and tutorials are sent to everyone. So please, if, I mean, given that you are here, you already have it, right? But if you know anyone that has any problem with that, please ask him to email me. For labs, labs are a kind of a very important integral part of this course, because again, programming cannot be successful without having hands-on, right? So you, you need to pay special attention to labs. And in fact, even to do good in, math, in, in, in the midterm and the final, uh, your scores will heavily depend on how much effort you have put in the lab, right? So labs are very important. They have 40% out of the total mark as we will see now. We have a total of five fundamental labs, three of them in C. So this is addressing the question of what languages we are going to cover. So we have this course as two halves. The first one is in C programming language uh, to cover some fundamental uh, programming concepts and then pointers, things you need in advanced courses such as microcontrollers and embedded systems. But also in the second half, we have, well, second half, we have Java to cover object-oriented programming courses. Uh, so three labs in C, two in Java, and also we have lab zero, which is the one that like is going to go through th this week and the coming week just for environment setup. Just go with you detailed step-by-step -step on how to set up your environment. Uh, what about the lab? Everything is in details in the Lab Zero document that I have already sub, uh, posted in uh, on, on Avenue. Uh, we will use GitHub Classroom. All the details are in Lab Zero. So Lab Zero is only for environment setup, such so that uh, you know what you need to do. Uh, you, you are only required to add two numbers as a single line of code. But again, the main focus is the environment setup. Let me check uh, questions here. What IDE, it's Eclipse. Again, it's, it's all is in, in Lab Zero. We'll use Eclipse uh, connected with, with GitHub. Uh, do we have to write our code for the midterm or midterms? Yes, during midterm is you have different forms of questions. Multiple choice are, 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 is one of them. Writing pieces of code is one of them. Correcting code as well. So it's all format of, of questions you might expect. Is lab zero next week, I'm going to come into this. 
is it possible for us to just use a text editor instead of an IDE? It's possible if you want, but given the environment, I highly recommend you follow exactly the environment that we are doing so that you make it easy for yourself if you have any problem to ask the TAs and utilize me and the TA office hours uh, to handle this. Is it fine if we only have experience in Python? This is all what I'm expecting from you. So I know that maybe most of you, their only experience with programming is Python in the first year general engineering. So that's completely understood. In fact, this is an excellent question because something I would highly recommend every one of you to do. I posted some kind of requested videos uh, onto Avenue uh, that are just reviewing some of the concepts of programming, loops, conditions, some Python, uh, just, just refreshing your mind about what you have covered in the Python course. Please make sure you go through these at least in the first week, such that I know you know this material. So you are expected to know at least some information from the Python course in the first year. Yes, lectures and tutorials will be recorded and I'm going to, uh, tutorials I'm not sure yet, but lectures for sure, yes. Okay. And I'm going to post the links for, for the videos on, on Avenue. Okay, so lab sections, good. And, and this is with regard to the question that you guys had of when uh, labs are starting. So, so you want to make sure you understand this pretty well because it might be confusing if you don't get it from this slide. And, and this lecture should be your main reference for the schedule, right? So labs are starting as of this week, in fact, because as I said, lab zero is only for environment setup. So, so the way labs should work is for example, this week. So the first week would be the even sections. So you know your section. So for example, section two is Monday, four is Tuesday, etc. Section one is Monday, exactly the same schedule you had in, in Mosaic, but it, it might be the even ones are starting before the old ones. The reason for this again, because we are starting from the first week. So labs run 2.30 to 5.30 daily based on your section. For example, today, section four has a lab at 2.30. So what do we do in the lab? So, so the lab format is only, it's, it's basically an allocated time in your schedule to go there, set, start developing the lab. And then if you have any questions, you will have the support. So there will be two TAs for each lab session such that they can address your questions. So lab sessions, uh, are kind of, you can leverage them given that you already have those allocated in your schedule. And also you will have two TAs online working with you uh, if you have any questions for the lab. But during lab sessions, there will not be any submissions. So you will not be required to submit lab zero during this time if you don't want to. All the submissions have their own deadlines and all the sections will submit the lab on the same deadline on GitHub Classroom as we will see in uh, next slide. Good. Um, for those who had lab yesterday, there is no worry at all. As I said, lab zero is just environment setup and we have uh, plenty of office hours to, to go there and ask questions if you got questions. So, okay, lab, lab submission deadlines. So these are the deadlines for submitting every lab. You are going to submit through GitHub Classroom. All the details of how to do this through a step-by-step -step process is in lab zero document that, that is already on avenue to learn right now. So again, the main purpose of lab zero is to get you into speed, walk you through the steps required to get the lab starter code, developing the lab, adding tests, and then submit the code. So doing lab zero successfully, you save yourself ton of problems and times and effort throughout the semester. So make sure you put the effort for lab zero, right? It might seem very easy, but please follow the steps uh, one by one, make sure you seek help if, if you want help. So with regard to help, as I said, for every lab session, we have two TAs for, for that lab session. And uh, every one of you is supposed to have received from me an invitation for their lab uh, sessions according to the section that they registered for. In addition to lab sessions, but maybe let's I just, just stop here and, but maybe after office hours, I, I look into all the questions. So in addition to, lab sessions, we also have office hours. In fact, we have four office uh, four, uh, office hours per day. So labs, as I said, start from 2.30 to 5.30. Office hours are from 10.30 to 2.30 every day, right? So you have, and this is a TA schedule for every day. In addition to this, my office hours are Tuesday after lecture, so one to three. 
uh, make sure you seek help throughout these office hours and uh, during lab sessions to address any problem you might have. As you can see, I have kind of allocated all the TA timing or manpower into helping you throughout the lab to address any problem you may face, right? You can ask them questions related to environment, questions related to the technical content of, of the lab, or even questions related to concepts in the lecture. Good. So let me stop here, look into questions. Do we have to create an account on the school email or whether they allow to use our personal GitHub account? That's an excellent question. You will find this stated in lab zero. You have to use your Mac master email address for your GitHub account, right? Uh, and, and, and just to give you an idea, this GitHub initiative is, is starting from 2SH4, but we intend, given that the feedback we got from students from previous years, they like to have uh, get associated with the programming courses. So it's going to be used also in 2SI next semester, hopefully, and in coming years. And we all obligate that you use your McMaster email. So have it only for once for 2SH4, you're going to use it across your, uh, your, your four year uh, degree. Uh, for tutorials, do we use the same link? I have already sent uh, a tutorial invitation Zoom link. It's different than lectures. Read Lab Zero, it tells you basically everything. Okay, the one was trying to reply. Are tutorials just for help or there will be new content? There will be no new content at all except the content that is related to the lab. For example, Lab Zero, we, we introduce also the concept of testing throughout labs. So you will have test cases to test your lab and also you are required to put some test cases to test your code. For C, we use unit testing library and throughout the tutorial, I have already posted the document again in the Lab Zero documents folder in, in Avenue. But in the tutorial, I will walk you through get terminology, what you need to know about get in abstract way or a very simple way how it works. And also for unit testing, how it works. So this kind of content will be the one for tutorials. It's the content related to the lab. Good. If I change the lab section this week, is it okay? So I would say as a general rule, you shouldn't be changing lab section at all because labs, lab sections have a capacity to make sure that TAs can help you. And most of lab sections, in fact, are, all, are already full. They have a, a capacity of 30 students, right? So please make sure you stick to your lab section, only attend the sessions related to your section. If you have a kind of a strong excuse, you need to change your lab section, just uh, contact me through email and we can see this a case by case. But as a general rule, you shouldn't be changing your lab section at all. Is lab section just getting help then? Exactly correct. So it's basically trying to program on the spot during the lab session. And you know that you have the TA available to ask them, right? Uh, but they will not be for submission or demo. Will the lecture slides will be posted? Yes. I have already posted lecture zero uh, to Avenue and regularly before the lecture, I'm going to post it. Do we need to finish lab in lab session or just before the deadline? What you are only required to do is to submit the lab by the deadline. You don't, you don't have to finish it through the lab session, but in fact, you are encouraged to do so to make sure that you have the help uh, if you need it. Will we get the labs all the same time to work on it? Yes, everyone will get the lab all in the same time and the deadlines are all in the same time. The first lab session says it's on the October 9. So based this, this, I guess you are looking into Mosaic. This depends on your schedule, right? This depends on your session. But what is in Mosaic is assuming that all labs start next week because this is, we just got this from the normal schedule previous years. But this year, because of what we have as an online nature and moving to GitHub to make it easy for you to develop, get help, test your code, and then uh, uh, also getting graded in a fair way, by moving to GitHub Classroom, we needed to introduce Lab Zero, right? Um, to, to, to set up the environment, to make, it, to make sure you already have the help needed to get your environment correct before delving into the actual labs, right? This is why you are starting labs from this week. Is that mean someone will have lab zero today? Yes, all lab sessions will start this week. But again, there is no required requirement to submit anything until September 18th, right? If all labs are due at the same time, what would give the someone who has it on Monday all week to complete it? All the lab, okay, that's, that's, a, that's a perfect point. So 
this question is saying if all laps are due in the same time, someone has a lap session on Monday would have a privilege over the one has a lap session on Tuesday. So that's not correct. And it's not correct for two reasons, right? So the first one is the lab is exactly the same for everyone. And the lab documents are released to everyone as of the start of the week that the lab is starting on. For example, lab zero documents are already submitted. After two weeks on Monday, I'm going to submit lab one uh, and post it on Avenue. So everyone will get it on the same time. Then in addition to lab sessions, you have four hours of office hours of TAs per day. So you can start developing. So this online nature is just saying you have flexibility to develop the lab at your own base. You have two weeks to finish it and you have the office hours to seek help. So you don't need to wait until your lab session or lab section to, to, to seek help from the TA. TAs are available daily for four hours to give you help if you want to finish early, right? Is there a required, there is no required text, but there is recommended uh, preferences in, in the outline that I have already posted in Avenue as well, if you want it. Your main source should be the, the slides. It, it will have many examples there in addition to what we cover in labs. Uh, if I'm in trouble if I'm not familiar with Python, no, but please make sure you go through all the videos uh, that I had as a prerequisite just to re refresh your mind, make sure you know these concepts, right? There is no attendance it's, uh, and lectures will be recorded. So don't worry about this. I, I guess what we are trying to focus on during these hard times is to deliver you the best education that we can, right? And, and what I can promise you as in, I can, we do our best to make sure this is the case, but go away from this kind of mentality of normal education of well, there is an attendance for lectures or you have to come. Okay, I guess, as I said, I'm going to program throughout the lecture. So if, you're going, if you are going to set and look into the lecture video at 11 p.m. because this is your convenience time, you, I promise you will not learn as someone who came to the lecture in the lecture time, programmed with me on the spot, ask it questions, look into how I write code, and then this would be the best way, right? So there is no attendance, but look into your education rather than your grades, right? Okay, so... I, I will come later into other questions if there are any, any other questions. So all resources will be posted in Avenue, as I said, for email. Feel free to email me, uh, especially if, if you need me in office hours, uh, make sure you email me before that. But please make sure that any email is, is kind of like the topic has this convention to SH4 in brackets. Otherwise, it will be filtered out. So I, I, I hope you, you stick to this otherwise because I have this filtering mechanism and I, I will not, be able to promise if I can look into any email without that. So what are we covering in this course? Um, so first of all, okay, so maybe I look first into the tentative outline. So we'll start the first two weeks by the basics of C language, data types, operations, basic operations, input, output, how to bring something on the screen, how to read something from the screen, also having uh, if conditions, for loops, while loops. So the basic of any program without functions or arrays or anything, right? After doing this in the first two weeks, we are going to uh, jump into functions and arrays. Afterwards, starting from here, maybe week four is the advanced topics of, of C programming, like pointers, pointer arithmetic, using pointers within functions, arrays in pointers, array pointers of pointers, and then structures. Structures is the form it's kind of the old form of classes. So structures is the good conclusion of C that takes us into the Java programming. So the second half of the course would be Java. We'll start by the Java basics, how it's different from C, and then classes, objects, lists, inheritance, polymorphism, how to use this to solve problems, abstract classes, the main concepts of object-oriented programming, right? And then finally, recursion and bitwise operations if we have time. Good. So. One of the most important things you need to know is the environment we built on GitHub Classroom with the make file and unit testing. We also have a mechanism in place to cross check all the Git repositories to make sure there are no similarities. And I'm guaranteeing you that there is a zero tolerance with any form of plagiarism, right? So as I said, we do our best to make sure you get the best education. And this is one of the things we do is to make sure we kind of guide you to make sure you write the code yourself. Otherwise, you are not learning. And one of the common problems 
previous student, students had with this course is that they didn't do the lab themselves and then they go to the midterm and final expecting to do good because lab is disconnected from midterm and final. But th they were surprised that this is not the case. If you didn't do the lab yourself, even if you get the lab mark, assume hypothetically, and you weren't caught, for example, during the midterm, you will, be, you, will, you, will, you will do terrible because you didn't write code yourself. And the midterm and final are really testing this, whether you understand what you're doing or not, right? So make sure you put the effort to, to learn the programming and, and to leverage the opportunity that is given to you throughout this course. This is also especially important because this course is not just a course in, 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 in the desert. It's the courses, many courses are building on top of that including data structures and algorithms to SI next semester. If you don't know to SH4, it's going to be a very problematic for to SI. Computer organization embedded systems are all assuming C knowledge and also um, operating systems assuming some, some knowledge of object oriented programming as well. So if you don't get to SH and you don't put the effort, you have bigger problems later. So you're just delaying your prob problems and in fact, exaggerating it, right? But if you put the effort and it's not huge effort, you leverage the help that we provide, I guess you have, it's, it's not hard at all to get an, an A plus for this course and, and make sure you do well. Programming is something that any engineer should be able to do. And in fact, it's required right now. So you are even affecting your, uh, your, your career by not doing well in this job. Okay, let me look into questions, but let me make sure I don't have any anything else. So yeah, so some advice before we conclude, please attend all lectures uh, as much as you can. As I said, it's, it's important to make sure you are up to speed. Labs are very important. Seek the help throughout office hours and lab sessions and, and put sufficient hours in labs. This will pay off. This is how I would study for the course by doing the labs well. And don't leave things to the last minute because usually it will not work. So let me see what is the time now. Uh, okay. Okay, so let me look into questions. Where is the YouTube link? I'm going to post this on, on, on Avenue, so don't worry about that. Sorry, one last question. Feel free to ask questions. I guess now we have some time. I finished early, so one last. If we link the school email to our personal account, it's still possible for our personal account to access the labs. Uh, it might be possible. I didn't try it, but it might create problems. So I, I really recommend, and, and this is also a kind of an advice like for you for your for your general career. It's, it's important to have a kind of a professional, non-personal email GitHub account, right? Because it, it will be beneficial for you to put it in your resume, go for internships, say that these are the projects I have worked on, this is my official GitHub account. So it, it's, it's better this way. We'll be writing code in midterms and exams. Again, yes, you will be writing code, correcting code, multiple choice questions, it, trying to trace code and execute it and look into the outcome. Is there any text box we need to buy? Uh, you will find recommended texts in the outline. Where is the YouTube link? I'm going to post it on Avenue. This is for me, lab start on October 9. So again, I said, your lab schedule, this lecture should be your reference point, right? So labs are starting this week. Mosaic is using, because it's just kind of inherited from the previous years, we used to start labs from second week, right? But now because of the nature we have, and I wanted to make sure you have enough help and enough time to get the environment set up. Previously, we just left the environment for the students to work on because we had actual physical labs where we have the IDEs there. And whoever wants this in, this, in the laptop, they just figure it out. But now it's not the case. So I wanted to make sure you have your environment ready and you have the support for that. We are starting labs this week, right? and make sure you, you, you kind of understand this. Um, is there any new material covered in tutorials? You guys are repeating questions. So yes and no. No in the sense that there is no theoretical new information, but yes in the sense that we are covering the information needed for the lab. As I said, I give an example of lab zero. Lab zero is using GitHub. So I'm going to go through Git terminology, how it works in abstracted way. Also, we introduce unit testing. So I'm going to go through some slides of how unit testing work, what you should do to be able to write your own test and test your code. 
this information is new. So it's where we don't have time to cover in the lecture. This is why I'm going to do the tutorials myself, right? So, so from that sense, yes, it might be some new material. So the lab, the lab is bi-weekly. So we have, again, going back to the lab slide, we have one lab every two weeks, right? Um, so I guess you, you guys need to understand this. So every lab runs for two weeks according to these, um, according to these sessions. And the deadlines, as you can see here, they are sparsed by at least two weeks, right? So lab zero is due, not this Friday, coming Friday. And then after two weeks, lab one, and then because we have reading week, so lab two is afterwards. So we have a lab every two weeks, right? Um, okay. Do we get YouTube videos for the labs? No, the labs are only to provide you with support to, to see you have allocated time for setting in to do the coding and you have the TAs with you to ask questions, right? And everyone should receive, should have received already the Zoom links for their lab section. So th there is no need for YouTube videos for, for labs, right? Can we run Eclipse on Mac? All these environment questions, you will be able to figure out once you look into lab zero document, right? Yes, you can. And there are detailed steps on how to do this. When is lab zero? Lab zero is starting this week for two weeks and the deadline is September 18th. So we can start doing the lab ahead of time and ask them if we have any questions, exactly the case, that's correct. And you are encouraged to do so. Because I am in China and I have a different time zone. Yes, you can work on the lab on your own completely seek help with the office hours and lab sessions and then submit remotely. So this is, this is why we have this environment in place is that you are not required to follow any time zone basically unless you need help to contact us. Good. Okay. So feel, feel free to ask questions, right? I haven't received the lab link. Where can I find? Please email me anyone who didn't receive links for lab session tutorials office hours, lectures, make sure you email me and may, maybe because you're not in Avenue, but just email me. My first lab is next week. It's going to be lab zero. Yes. It's in, in, don't follow the lab schedule on Mosaic, please. Make sure you follow the lab schedule on these slides that you already have on Avenue because we are starting labs this week. Are labs generally long? E yes, except for lab zero. Labs would take some effort to do because they would cover some concepts, especially the advanced ones. Are there instructions for Linux setup? Not in lab zero document. And the main reason is Linux setup is really pretty much very easy to do. But if you want this, just feel free to contact the TA or contact me. It wouldn't take 10 minutes. Linux is the easiest one to get the environment set up in, right? You guys have any other questions? How to attend office hours? Just go to the Zoom link and then you should have either the TA or me based on which office hours is that and, and you will find us there, right? So one thing, oh, it should be GCC, but it doesn't really matter. It shouldn't be GVM. So, so one, one thing that is really, maybe I leverage the time, the remaining, uh, kind of five minutes to, to discuss with you. So for the lab environment, what, we, what you will see is, or basically how, how, how this will work, right? Maybe in, in, a, in a very brief way for those who are going to start working in the lab. So you will go through the steps. What you want to do, what you want to do, you to do is, uh, once you have your MacMaster email account GitHub thing, you have a link in the Lab Zero document for an invitation for Lab Zero. Once you click this link, you will have an invitation for the starter code. This will by default create a repository for you in your account once you sign in. And then uh, you go through the steps one by one by downloading or, or in Get Terminology cloning this repository. You open Eclipse in, in the explained way in the lab document and you start developing the code. How to develop that? So there are two aspects here. In lab zero, you are required only to add two numbers. So the function is very basic just adding two numbers, right? And uh, 
but you are also the second thing you are required to add some tests for this. So what you will find as in the starter code, you will find that we provide the testing environment and we have some tests in place such that you really can test your code before even submitting it. For example, assume you added the function in a wrong way. And instead of adding the two numbers, you subtracted them. You can run the test environment as explained in the lab zero document. You will find that the tests will fail. When the test fails, it tells you what is the expected output and what is your actual output and they don't match. So they give you a detailed report why your test fails. And then you go back to your code, develop it, and then run the testing again. This is more of resembling the actual environment. This is resembling the, the, the actual environment that you have in industry places, like where you have what we call regression tests. You develop things, you submit your code to run the regression tests. If they fail, you have to go back and figure out why it fails. If it passes, you are good, then you can submit your code. This is how you should have your mentality in. And then, once you have everything passing, you also can add your own test. You are asked in lab zero, for example, to add at least one single test by, for example, providing, I would say, how you would provide a test. I'm adding two numbers. So you would say in the test environment, I'm going to provide 10 and five as an input, and the expected output is 15. And then you compare the 15 with the outcome. If it's not 15, you just put the, 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 the brand for, for the uh, faulty, uh, running there, good? You will see this in, in, in the test environment. Once you have all of that and everything is passing, you just push your code into the repository by having git uh, commit add push, all the steps are there in the lab zero document. And then by doing this, you have just submitted your code and you are done, right? This is one thing. The second thing is assume you need some help from the TA through the office hours or from me in, in my office hours. What we can do is we both can look into your code repository and see exactly where you have the problem. And I can give you some feedback on the code. So also GitHub is a way to share feedback, right? To give you say, okay, your line of code here is problematic. Uh, and uh, here you are not passing this test because of that. So we can provide you some feedback, good? The other thing is that means you can work in your lab from any place, in fact. If you have a laptop and desktop, then Basically, everything is in the repository, so you can work in both places at the same time. Good. Okay, so all questions I guess I have already addressed. Again, this lecture will be recorded and, and the link will be provided. All the slides are already there on Avenue. Do you have the opportunity to comment, poll, request on others? Good. Why you want to do that? <laughs> no, you don't, right? So, so these labs are individually developed, right? So you shouldn't be interacting at all with other uh, students' repository, right? One thing that for you to know is this environment also helps us grade the code and check your efforts because you have different commits, right? So we can go through the history of when you develop the code. For example, if you just wait until the last minute and then submit the whole code and then it passes, it, 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 it might seem not very well aligned that you have put enough effort in that, in that lab that was supposed to be developed in two weeks. But if I see that you started working on something, you finished a function today, then after two days, you finished another function, this doesn't work correctly, but after three days, you corrected it. So I see that you put the effort to develop your code. So I have the full history of what you do in the repository, right? So if any problem arises, we can go back and check Right, so it's it's in this environment. In addition to having this tool that we can cross-check all the repositories to make sure there is no plagiarism, also we have access to the history of your development. Right, so make sure, as I as suggested in Lab Zero document, every time you work on the lab, in in this setting, for example, maybe you need ten hours to 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 develop the lab, and you're going to do it one hour per day. Every lab, every hour, at the end of the hour, make sure you push whatever you have done, push it right, in order not to lose it, and also in order to keep track of that, right, in case that any problem arises. Are we good? So if we get it from the right, the first try, this is not enough effort? No, it's, it's enough, but as you will see, later if you have a 10 questions lab, and every question has a kind of considerable amount of effort, and then you don't push anything until the last second, and then our 
checking cross-checking tool 